I am very happy to uh, introduce Andy Bleeden from the European Connected Health Alliance. And Andy will discuss the funding opportunities for innovative projects and answer the question, who should pay for innovation in healthcare? <laughs> I don't know if you will actually answer that question, will you? Will you answer the question? You'll have to wait like everybody else. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just wanted to... <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to know if... If I tell you now, I might as well go and sit down. <laughs> okay, fine. That, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. So I'll, I'll have to wait like everyone else. Um, but anyway, I'm happy to give you the floor. So um, go ahead. And you can ask questions, as always, here and after the presentation. Thank you for the introduction. And thank you for, for inviting me over. Uh, it's, it's lovely to be here in Estonia again. I've been before. Uh, she's correct that the presentation will be in English. Uh, I have a, a, an Estonian version of it, but it's very, very short. Uh, consistent of the words hello and goodbye, um, mostly in English. Um, firstly, uh, obviously, this is a presentation uh, about funding. I wouldn't be here from the Connected Health Alliance without talking about the Connected Health Alliance. Uh, just briefly, for those people who... Any, anybody... Is everybody here aware of the, the European Connected Health Alliance? Hands up if you're aware of the European Connected Health Alliance. Okay. Okay, what time are we finishing tonight? Seven? Okay. Briefly, uh, there's ecosystems just like this one dotted around in 40 other uh, environments like this across Europe, Canada, China, uh, North America, We've recently signed a, a memorandum of understanding with the, uh, the Commonwealth organization, which has brought in us making uh, a relationship with another three, potentially three billion uh, people across the, 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 the globe. But for, 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 for your understanding for today, uh, we're a membership organization. Um, if you're a, a public sector or not-for-profit, that means a free membership organization a small cost for SMEs, a slightly bigger cost for large companies. And the whole idea behind the European Connected Health Alliance is in the, in the word connected, okay? The clue's in the title. It does exactly what it says on the tin. The idea is we connect up all the people in this picture. Now, you'll be pleased to hear this is the end slide. It's not the, the, the only slide I'm going to show you, but I put this on the end just to give you another. So all the people in this room, you should be able to see your type of organization there. So we're made up of all the people, all the different silos you get in the, in the health and social care world. If you're interested in becoming a member, you can go onto our website, which is here uh, on, on uh, ECHAlliance.com and find out more. Uh, that's enough about the ECH Alliance. I have to make, make an apology first. Um, some people have said, oh, are you Brian O'Connor or, or another O'Connor? No, um, they have a different voice than me and a different name. So sorry that they, they couldn't be here, but... Uh, the purpose of me being here, as has is, 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 is just been said, is to talk through some funding that's related to innovation. But first, a story. Someone's asked me to tell you this story. Healthcare doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to fit in your pocket either. Healthcare for me, this last couple of weeks, was I couldn't hear. Okay? I had a problem with my hearing and my ears were blocked. So like most ignorant men, I just thought people are being very rude and mumbling and, and not talking very loudly. It's their problem, not mine. Speak up, please. Um, but I went to, the, went to the doctor. They said, oh, your ears are blocked. Um, after I Googled it, and, and of course, Dr. Google comes up with everything from high blood pressure to ear cancer to, you know, death at the end of your foot or all these things that Google comes up with. But your ears are blocked. Take, these, uh, take this medicine to the chemist and, and, and they'll give you some medicine. So I went to the chemist. And, and, and in England, it's, it's a quite an easy procedure. I walked up and said, uh, I've got a problem with my ears. Because you have to talk funny when, when you're ill. I've got a problem with my, with my ears. I don't know why, but you do. And the, the woman said, oh, okay. And the doctor gave me this. And I gave her the piece of paper. Okay. She reached across. She, she grabbed the healthcare innovative product, which is ear drops. Placed it on the table. Have you used these before? Have you used these before? No, no, no. Okay, there's instructions inside. Out come the instructions, and they're on, you know, you've, you've seen instructions in, in, in chemical products. They're at least font size two, okay? 
I can't see. I've got a problem with my eyes. Oh, Christmas. You could see her face drop. Okay, so she got the box. She took the instructions out of the box. She said, it's okay. I'll read them to you. I can't hear. <laughs> this didn't end very well. It was, it was a short interview, but I'm better now. I can hear. The bad news is, and the good news for you is, I forgot my glasses, which means I don't read the slides. Okay? I've got a habit for those people who know me. I don't read slides, um, particularly the ones that I've written, obviously, because I've written them. I don't need to read them out to you. But it means that I can go through these slides quite quickly. That's the idea of this. Uh, there's lots of text. You'll notice, I hope, I've not made that a classic error. Many years ago, I thought I'd be really smart. I put the title of the conference agenda on my presentation. And I inserted the words, I found out afterwards, to be decided. So my whole presentation was called to be decided. Every page had to be decided on the top. Check first. What does this mean? <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm going to whip through, okay, some relevant calls which might be of interest to you from European funding sources, from the European Commission, that might be useful to fund some innovation. Okay? And then I'm going to talk about my experiences as an evaluator uh, for the, with the European Commission, with the EIT, with other funders all over the UK. I get to see all the projects when they come in and evaluate them. So I'm going to give you some guidance on how to write a proposal and some do's and don'ts. Okay? And then I'd like to give you a small example of some innovation from the UK that's non-digital, but still innovative. Okay? So, I'm going to go through some areas of interest around Horizon 2020. Hands up, this is about you waking up and not falling asleep. Participation. Hands up all those people who have heard of Horizon 2020. Oh, goody. Right. Okay. What I want to do, I'm going to go through some areas of interest. I want to raise your expectations about funding and a potential funding source. And I'm going to ask you lots of questions. So that's bad news for you. And the reason I brought them up, I think there's potential in these calls for, for collaboration. I've had a chat already with Perrette about some of them and colleagues uh, elsewhere. But, but collaboration, not that I've got, I haven't got a, a, a grand scheme, but I think there's potential for collaboration between partners here in Estonia and across our other ecosystems. Do you remember the, the magic word, connected? It's not about, we don't, we don't get paid per, per um, submission from, from ecosystems at all. This is about us wanting to get involved and connect up some of our ecosystems across Europe. Um, I've got some more amount of information and facts. The rest of the information, you can go away and find out online. And I'll show you how to do that as well. Um, but we would like to be involved potentially as a partner. And that, for a lot of people, is a shock because they think we're funded by one or other government. We're not. Most of our business model is funded through taking part either through our membership um, or through being involved with, with European cooperation projects through funds like Horizon 2020. So we'd like to be involved as a partner, not as a consultant or sit in the back room consultant, etc., but as a partner. So the first one, or the last one if this doesn't work, Yes, one, wonderful. Next. The first one has a snappy title. SC1. No, I'm not, I don't read any of this stuff out. This is around mental health in the workplace. This is a really interesting call. It's interesting for lots of reasons. Because it's a relatively newish area for the European Commission to look into, mental health. Not new, but newish. Especially in the workplace. That could be managing issues such as stress in the workplace, dealing with depression, dealing with um, um, uh, maybe early onset of dementia, etc., etc., etc. The idea, the idea behind these calls is they're broad, so that you can apply in and give your idea as to what you think could be a good potential solution or proposal. Uh, there's quite a large budget, and they're going to fund between two to four million euros per project. So that means quite a lot of projects are going to get funded. So they want to see a whole heap of ideas. Okay? That's interesting as well because quite often that's quite new, that approach. Uh, you'll notice for those people like me, there's something in red here. Uh, the deadline for this is quite soon. It's a two-stage proposal. So there are already people looking for partners to take part in this call. 
Okay? So if you're interested, we'd like to hear from you because uh, we've, we've got some partners already got a call already uh, developed and they might be looking for partners, either technical partners, healthcare partners, or pilot projects, or cities to get involved, or test to validate things, etc., or SMEs. So we think it's of a potential interest across our ecosystems. If you want details of these, I may invite you, because I have an annoying habit of walking in front of the thing just as you take a picture, sorry. Um, you will get these slides. This is one thing Google is useful for. You Google that, you'll come up with the call page instantly. One of the good things about the Commission website is quite easily accessible. That's the first area. Second area, I should just say as well, this is a research and innovation action. So they want to see examples of research, applied research, as well as innovation. The second one, a lot of people, hands up, who's ever heard of PCPs? Okay. They usually cause uh, two types of reaction, uh, pain or uh, scratching of heads. I was involved with one of the first PCPs called Project Silver. Um, a robotics PCP, relatively successful. The idea behind this is you run a competition for some solutions um, using a methodology that, it, that manage, manages to respect procurement rules and you can come up and develop, help, it helps to develop new innovation. So they're looking for, to use a PCP methodology, a competition, don't tell the commission I just said that word, but it's a competition to come up with some digital health uh, and care and services. So they want to see an increased path to innovation. They're quite clear about that on, in, their, in their call text. I, I also see that they're targeting support of, of, of health and, and, and uh, care providers. I think this is ideal for cities and regions who are already looking to procure. They've got an idea, they've got some money in their wallet that they want to spend. If you don't want to spend any money on digital health and care services, don't get involved. This is about cities and regions who want to procure. They don't know what they want to procure, but they've got a problem, and they're going to try and, try and find some solutions. That's what the PCP model is useful for. Okay? Be aware, it has a date there, it says 2019, but the closing date is November 2018. That catches a lot of people out. Okay? The next one is a PPI. Now, in, in the UK, PPI were these people that missold insurance, payment protection insurance, and you used to get phone calls in the middle of the night from strangers. We believe you've been missold payment protection insurance, and you'd usually put the phone down and swear at them. But this is something that's slightly different. This is public procurement of, of innovative solutions. That's what it means. Again, the idea around the same similar theme is that you are ready to purchase and deploy, scale up, use, use and make use of new solutions. So as I put here, we think this should be, particularly in, in Estonia, for those reasons, regions only that are looking, already seeking to procure. This is not, oh, we just want to get involved with your big corporation, it's really good fun. This is about you putting your hand in your wallet and buying a solution at the end of the project. The last call I come to you about is demonstration pilots. So again, as Jordi was saying earlier on, moving away from the pilots into to, to deployment, these are demonstration pilots around personalized medicine, okay? People say, Andy, why are you interested in this fund? Mm, I, I can't possibly tell you. I, I, there's something written there that attracts me. I can't believe it's very clear. It's, I just like this. It's a snappy title. Okay? So they're looking to fund between 18 to 20 million euros. That says that's going to be a large consortium spending a lot of money of their own money because their funding intervention rate with this is, is, is slightly different because you have to put your own money into it. Okay? However, we think this is going to be likely to be oversubscribed because it's a lot of money. I'm getting all the time for that. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I come from the UK. I mean, we're, we're, 
we're not going to have any money soon. So this is something for us to get excited about quite quickly. So uh, I think, you know, again, we, if, if, because of the size of the, 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 the potential projects, we would like to include as many ecosystems in projects as we can. So if you're interested, give me a call. The contact details are at the end of this. If you think you're apart from a region or a city that might be interested, or indeed a tech provider or an SME, etc., who is looking to get involved with this, then also give me a call. Again, the value of what we can provide is that connect connectivity between our projects and existing ecosystem members. So, that's the end of the, 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 the few opportunities I want to throw in front of you. If you would like some more, we're going to publish... And we continue to publish these opportunities via our website and via our newsletter with some information. But what I'd like to do is talk about how to write a successful proposal. Because there's a lot of difference. Because when, when people usually talk about Horizon 2020, the words fail and, and lots of projects fail and high competition come into it. Okay? You might hear that some, some funds have success rates of 6%. That's a lot of work, okay? So I'd like to give you some clues from my experience of being involved. My background, as I said, um, obviously I've not always done this, but my background's in psychiatry, in, in, in forensic psychiatry, working with um, dangerous criminals. And um, I won't make a joke about that, but uh, I, 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 I've, I've spent most of my life doing that. Um, but I've also been involved with funding just about all of my career. Um, Somebody accused me once of holding a, a, a funder upside down and shaking them physically until the money came out of the pockets, verbally. Um, because I like to get involved in, and, and, and work with funders to find out what they want. If you find out what the funder wants, you usually get quicker access to the funding. My experience also tells me that most funders cannot spend all their money because they don't get their message across. And we're here from some private investment, I think, later on. Um, Certainly public investors struggle to spend all their money. That's good news for people like me. It keeps me in a job. Um, but it's bad news for people like those people who, who put in lots of projects and, and most of them get failed. So hands up all those people who've been involved with the Horizon 2020 project or a European collaboration project with funding. Okay. How many of you submitted a project? Slightly more. That's actually a pretty good success rate. We sometimes see success rates, I think I don't, the last time was about 6%, maybe, if you're lucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Less, the, basically, she's saying basically, if you go for a PCP, there's less competition. Because it can be um, a pain in the bum to go through. Um, but it's worth it. I've done it. And if I can do it, so then so can you. Um, what, we, uh, what I can do is give you some tips. My tips come from my experience of scoring the proposals. And this is the big reason why I do this, this presentation. It's not because I'm a know-all, which some people say I am. Um, one, of the, one of the, and I'll give you an, an, an example. One of the, the, the times I was in, involved with a, um, funding evaluation, there were 285 proposals for three projects. Okay? That's a lot of work. Those were usually 90-odd pages long. By the time all the CVs and all the information was part of it, just think of how much paper that is. 70. 70. So, so just think how much paperwork that is. And what a waste of time that was for all the people that didn't get the money. And all the people using the room would say, well, it's a lot of competition, high levels of quality. I'm sorry, it's not. And the experiences I've had, a lot of the proposals fail on quality. That's a controversial thing to say, um, but that's my assessment. They fail to meet the minimum requirements. And that says to me, people are either not listening or not, not collaborating properly and not looking at what the funder wants. Okay, I can't guarantee you're going to get a funder, but I can, hopefully if you follow these tips, you'll be a little bit closer. So, Welcome to the world of the bin. I like to use this. I don't use complicated diagrams in any of my slides. I like to get the message across. This is where your project will go unless you follow these very easy rules. Oops. They take a lot of time and effort. 
these proposals, up to six, maybe sometimes 12 months to prepare. Okay? So read the document. Read through what the funder actually wants. All of the, the, the funding calls, not just from Horizon 2020, are quite clear. They're quite generic because they're an open call for proposals. They're not asking for tenders. They're a call for proposals. So it's, they're asking you to come up with an idea. But you need to be clear if you've got a really good idea or you're just short of a bit of cash. If it's the latter, don't go for this. This is around funding excellence. I'll come on to that in a minute. You've got to be really clear about what you're proposing. Because if you're not... Uh, I, the scorer, will not be either. Because if you don't understand it, nobody else will. If you have to have complicated diagrams in there, no one's going to read them. You've got to meet the scope of the call. I've got a really good project as help around mental health. It's an ear treatment cream, as suggested by Andy Bleeden. It's not within the call, really, is it? It's, it's not around mental health. Um, you need to think about very clearly who's going to be in your consortium. Who's in the team? I always say, and what are they going to do? Is it, I'm, I've got Professor uh, John Longhair in here because he's my favorite prof professor from the University of Longhairness. Uh, he's really good. He's written some wonderful papers. Yeah, but what's he going to do? Okay. What are they actually going to do to the project? Who's going to write it? How are you going to do it on, you know, on, on, on using Google Drive, Dropbox? Or are you going to do it via email? Don't bother. Um, when are you going to do it? Plan properly, okay? Plan in time and know what your weaknesses are. Identify really early who is the weak point in your project team and make sure you uh, jump up and down on them until they deliver what they're supposed to. Okay, first tip I go through is between your core, core group, come up with what your project will do between you in 20 words. Because you're going to have to explain it to people if you want them to join. If you can't do it in 20 words, um, I'm sure that you're going to waste the next 70 or however many pages um, writing down a lot of rubbish. Because if you can't come up with this project, we'll test this by using this over here. 20 words is not a lot. So put, you know, you, and with that, you should be painting a very clear example of what your concept is and how it fits to the work program. You need to do some research on what the current state of the art is, okay? State of the art. Let me give you an indication. May I? Just for a second. This is a mobile phone, not being used whilst during lectures, I happen to ask. This mobile phone was developed by Apple, yeah? However many years ago. This is the state of the art. Thank you very much. Um, <coughs> it's like being at school. I will have that pencil. Uh, Outside, no. Um, so understand what the state of the art is. That state of the art. When was that invented and designed? Yeah? Okay? Just think back. Because you, How long have you had that phone, roughly? Three months. So it was probably designed maybe three, four years ago. Yeah? Concept, drawn up, etc., etc., etc. It's quite a new, nice phone as well. I could have kept it, given it mind, but no, never mind. Um, when you're planning for a concept, the state of the art in your project... You will be, pro you know, for the course we've got now, we're putting in a proposal in a year's time, okay? And then we're going to say, we're going to make this thing, this doofer, this, this widget, and it will hit the market, not in three years' time, but in, I'm going to do this, five years' time. So, way off into the future. So, saying we're going to develop a mobile health app, um, sit on an app store, isn't necessarily... That new. Oh, we're going to enhance the Bluetooth capabilities of this. Okay. Just try and think of what your project will do in five to seven years' time. And then start thinking about what the current state of the art is. Okay? Think about the expected impacts. The commission very kindly lists them out, what they want you to achieve within the call. And state how you'll meet them. I think, and I say this... Uh, from my experience, you need to have a clear lead on dissemination and, mm -hmm. and it can be a separate person, leading on exploitation within your project. Okay? You need to resource a work plan and manage risk and IPR issues. This is what's assessed. I'm not going to read through them all, 
but they assess your levels of excellence, impact, and implementation. You can read there the elements there, and in greater detail. This is all public information. This is what the assessor will see. You're, as an assessor, this is what I'm asked to judge, okay, and come up with a score. Okay, you'll get these slides. You don't have to write them down. I'll get out of the way. You might be able to see them. That will help. Okay. And then you can see how it's scored. If you know how it's scored, it's kind of easier to write the proposal because you think, well, this is how I'm going to write my proposal. What it means, if you're not scoring properly, are these, these areas. I can't be bothered. To, if I'm giving you a zero for your project, I'm not even going to read it. Hi, what are you going to do about mental health? I'm going to develop an ear widget. Right, okay, bin. Um, if it's very, very poorly written, you shouldn't have bothered. Uh, you, you really shouldn't have bothered. You, you shouldn't even bother to write it, etc. And obviously, the, the scores go up to take the money. The facts of the matter are, winning proposals usually, not always, usually score above 14, sometimes 12, usually above 14. Uh, there's only one mark above 4, well, two marks above 14, uh, 14 and a half and 15. So your project has got to be excellent, okay? There's a, a, a clip there. How much time have we got left? Oh, no time. No time? Okay. I should conclude. There's, there's, this is what happens to your project afterwards, okay? And there's some tips uh, to get funding, okay? They're quite harsh tips, and the tips are based from experience. Obviously, I've been involved with pr pr successful and, and, and also unsuccessful projects as well. But you've got to take all of those factors into consideration. Now, brief, if I may, I'm going to talk to you about a very, very, very quick, low-tech piece of innovation. Very, very quick. Okay? You'll get this slide and a picture of my side of my head. Okay. I'm going to talk about dementia and doing dementia differently. Okay? This is a lovely picture from an advert in 1974. This is how things have changed. The advert says, this is an aged and agitated lady. She's a pain, basically. That's what she's saying, because she's got dementia. The words in the advert talk about her being suspicious and horrible, you know, just not nice to manage. We don't talk about people with dementia like that anymore. That's how it used to be when I started work. Okay? And it was about medication. It was basically a chemical cosh. The, the world of dementia has gone through some changes with some radical thinking. Radical thinking about how we address people living with dementia and not just the idea of dementia. There's been a cultural change because of sport, particularly, and our own disability. A cultural change and an innovation in thinking. And one of the areas we've got is a project called Educate, which was in uh, Stockport in Greater Manchester, which I used to be involved with. And this was around people who were living with dementia, no app, no computer, people who were living with dementia, training other people what it's like to live with dementia after the diagnosis. No greater teacher could you have than someone who's living with dementia now, telling you what's going to happen to you over the next five, ten years. Okay, and they did a lot to raise awareness around dementia. And then lastly, talk around what it's like to live with dementia and live well with dementia. Because that, for around the, in the field of dementia, was quite a radical step. So if, I'd invite you to, if you've, you've got a chance, is to Google uh, the, just the concept of, of doing dementia differently or the Educate project in Stockport. Because they, they, they try and promote a positive image about what it's like to live with dementia. Not, not for a couple of years after the diagnosis, but eight to 10 years. So they get a longer time living in the community and living well with that d dementia diagnosis in the community. And, and, and they get involved with European projects as well, which is quite exciting. So these are people we usually relegate and, and give chemical coshes to years ago that now live positively in the community and take part and put back into the community. So have a look at that. And I think that, that concludes me for today. Thank you very much. We don't have any questions here, but if anyone has a question that they'd like to address, yes. Thank you very much, Andy. It was very emotional and uh, obviously you are excited about that. But as the, as the previous commission official, I have to correct you. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But, you know, this work plan is not the commission prepared work plan. It's the commission who publishes it. 
because it is put together with the scientific advisory committee, which is the representatives of the member states, including the people from Estonia who come together and contribute to the areas in which the research has to be made. And then the Commission puts, based on this information, the draft, which will be sent to the programming committee and to, again to the scientific advisory committee. It comes to the member states, every country can contribute. And then we have this uh, right to publish it. So it sounds, of course, like as a Commission paper, but it's actually made by the member states because it's the member states' money and it's the member states' funding. We just, uh, as the, from uh, this side, we see that it's a commission who does it, but in fact, the commission only makes sure that the funding is correctly used. And uh, another point that I would like to add is that you didn't, on these tips, uh, that in my mind, there's one was missing. Uh, it's, sometimes it's a good idea to go to the website, the CORDIS website, in which all the funded projects are available, to see the projects that are got funded, to go back to the topic description and to see what is that they did uh, in their proposal in a way that it got the funding. See who are the partners in these pro projects and find the ones who know how to write the good proposals. Learn from there because to start from becoming a coordinator and write the proposal from the scratch first time, it's hardly unlikely that you will get funding, but you can learn from somebody who is experienced. I think that is also, actually, that's a requirement. You have to have at least three member states involved in this Horizon 2020 project. But that's not the only funding. There is plenty of other ways of getting money. For example, health program. There is a little bit more tricky thing that it requires six member states to participate in the project. And it's not research, it's more the deployment projects. Then we have this SME instrument, which is a new element in Horizon 2020, where only one company can apply to support the SMEs and to support their work. There is this uh, uh, European Innovation Technology instrument, which uh, you also mentioned, and which is the good support, but that is uh, quite a big part of uh, your own funding that uh, is involved. So there is, if you go, I would suggest you to go to this uh, website, which is Horizon 2020 Participant Portal, and you have the full list of all funding opportunities. Thank you. So uh, a lot of practical information. Look everything up later, and I'm sure you can approach Andy with any practical questions that you got. We also have a little gift for you. So uh, another applause, and uh, thank you very much. <laughs>